So this is the Jcon pencil holder. It does fold up to make a pencil holder it's on your desk. However, there's more to it than just being that. It is a design tool. The first couple panels here are simply for textures. This is the standard textures. This is more for touch. This kind of the same kind of pattern. Uh, you just have different intensities and increases. Um, so that's the basics there. The next panel here is specialty textures, which come to things like wood grain and machine polished, uh, kind of checkered, um, but that's specialty textures. Again, those are gonna be more for feel, maybe some for look a little bit. Now we're getting into the actual designing capabilities of this. So the first here is showing how, why you would want to shell a part or a certain section of a part compared to it being solid. So these two squares are actually built the same, designed the same. However, this one here has these dimples and all the faces all around uh, where the top piece does not. In fact, on the back, you can see it also has dimples and you can see the top one is hollow. That's because material shrinks when it cools, so it'll kind of collapse in on itself a little bit. To avoid these marks or sink marks, you would want to shell as many pieces as you can. Keep the wall thickness down like two millimeters or so. The next here is similar. It's wall thicknesses as well. This whole plate is two millimeters. So it's showing a 75% wall thickness, 50% wall thickness, and the bottom one is 25% wall thickness. There's a few things with that. You can see that it is kind of see-through a bit. However, if I were to cover this up, you can also see that the sink marks are affected by it as well. The thinner you go on the wall jump, the more sink marks you get. So stepping down in size from the two millimeter wall thickness gives different shrink marks. Down here, this feature here, this is similar. This is rib thicknesses. So you would do things like such as here for rib support to support the plastic pieces. And it talks about rib thicknesses. You can go from 50% to 75% to 100% to even 125% on these. And that's just as an example. Ideally, you wanna go no more than about 60% of the normal wall thickness when you need a rib. And on the back side, when you look at your tool, you will see shrink marks. Each material is different, so some materials won't show shrink marks as much, but it does increase the shrink marks as you go up in wall thicknesses on this. Down here, the last thing that's being mentioned on this tab is the living hinge. A lot of plastics, if you go to bend them like this, they'll just break and snap at that, at that spot. Some materials have the ability to bend and keep all together and not break. Um, and that is property usually of the material, um, but also the design, uh, how it's designed thin there. This next tab here, at the top it talks about text being raised, which is going to be most of what we have done on this entire design. So it would be embossed, and then you also have debosed below it. It's the only one that's gonna be like that on this entire tool, um, and it's indented. You can see the difference between embossed and debosed text. The next thing we have here is going to be our uh, ultrasonic welding, the 90 degree triangle. Um, on the actual documentation that I've written up for this, you will also see a little bit more description about how you use that. But basically the little piece down the middle of what would be the quote unquote the wall thickness that you see here is the size of ratio of anywhere from one tenth to one eighth the thickness of the wall. And that'll allow you to do ultrasonic welding where basically you fuse two pieces of plastic together to seal them together. These next two segments down here are going to talk about straight pulls and cams. And I'll just jump into that, it'll kind of explain itself. So this first one here, to create a tunnel like that through the piece, when you have a mold that's here and a piece of mold that's here, they pull away from each other. To create this tunnel, you have to have special pieces on the side that slide in and out. That's extra tooling in the mold that does cost more money to do so. Whereas the piece below it makes a tunnel through it, and that's simply done by through holes. Um, alternating. So this part pulls out, this part pulls out just like with the mold, no extra costs. Much simpler on the design as well. Similarly down here, um, this snap hook or this hook here is created again with a through hole. So again the mold just separates like this, there's nothing special going on with it. Whereas this piece here has a cam, it would slide in and out. So the mold moves up and this piece slides out. Again there's, there's a little bit more cost associated with that. Finally here on the bottom, I'll start with the insert molding. With insert molding, um, there's a couple ways that things can be done. Inserts can be placed in by being pressed in, 
or heated in. But what we've used here in this particular situation is the inserts placed in the mold and the plastic flows around it, which actually fuses the plastic to it. So it's actually created with the plastic at the same time. It's gonna give it the most sturdy connection. Then we have mounting bosses. Um, incorrect mounting bosses compared to correct mounting bosses. You can see this incorrect one here has this corner made out on it. It's also very thick, where you can see the correct counterpart is gonna be much smoother, rounder, and it's a thinner wall. Like I recommended over here, you want about 60% of the thickness of this here, and that's about what that's made with there. And that uses uh, less material, it flows better, and you won't get so many sink marks. You can also see here this particular mounting boss is off and not connected to its, its rib or wall. A lot of people make it thicker to, for support. That's improper, you're gonna have sink marks and issues with the plastic flowing properly. Again, making thin connection ribs to that wall is gonna be the best option on that. And that is the basics of our tools. Thank you.